Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Baked Fish Brains. I am your host for this episode, Fishy Wizard Five. You can call me Fish, call me Andy, doesn't matter to me. I will answer to all of them. And I'm joined by my absolutely wonderful co-hosts, Brain and Bush. Hello. Say hi. Hello. And today we are going to be talking about microtransactions and how we feel about them and you know payment models of games in general these days so i will start off the conversation as i normally do by providing my quick history of uh, <laughs> what i think about the topic so in, in you know, since we come from a background of playing RuneScape, and you know we all grew up, you know mostly in the the two thousands, so we're used to you know cartridge games. We're used to games like RuneScape, the, and you know cartridge games are games where you just buy the cartridge and you can play the game forever. There's there's no Nothing else you have. To, nothing you have to do to keep playing it, you know. And then we also played RuneScape, which is a live service game, which had a subscription subscription model where you just, you know, paid like five dollars a month, and you just play the game, and you could just play however much you wanted to. It was just five dollars a month, and the game got continuous updates so it never felt like you know it, it felt like it was worth it because you because you kept getting more content every single month you kept paying every single month you got more content that's what made the subscription model worth it now as we uh started moving past the 2000s i mean I, i'm speaking just for us I, i'm sure if, if you guys were to look online about exactly when these certain things happened i'm sure you can find examples like going way earlier but for us for most of us, I'm sure once we hit like the you know the 2010s eras, that's when we started hitting the era of micro microtransactions started appearing in you know most of the games that we started playing, especially most of, like the big games. It went into RuneScape in like 2012, I think, and and, and back when it was introduced into RuneScape, RuneScape 3 or whatever it was called back then, RuneScape 2, um, it was very it was very, very, very light on microtransactions, but you know, most people still got upset by them because, you know, rightfully so, it, it completely changed the entire dynamic of how the game was played. Um, but yeah, let's let's let's. I'm not gonna go into detail about microtrans microtransactions in that era because I'm sure we're gonna go into detail later in this episode. Uh, what else? I guess there were also um, games like World of Warcraft. They their model was you had to buy a base game, then you had to also pay a subscription, and then you have to pay money for expansions as well, right? And, and a lot of games do that mm -hmm. nowadays. Like it's not just World of Warcraft. Many many uh, MMOs and such have that payment model. I don't even know what to call that. Like. <laughs> Because it's like a mixture between it's a mixture between payment and then also it, it's a mixture between subscription, but also like game purchase plus DLCs essentially. We'll it's just like call a, it the WoW model. The WoW model, yeah, that's fair. That, it, it is you know WoW essentially like started it, and that's where they're gonna go with it. Uh, is there any other like notable models? Well, there there is also just the uh, complete MTX model. Um, when I, I'll I'll combine this with like. Do I want to combine combine this with gacha games? Because they because they are kind of different, but also at the same time they're also the same. So I'm gonna call I'm gonna blanket all of this into just the free to play model. So this will include games like League of Legends, where the game is completely free to play, but you can spend money on the game for you know cosmetics in the game to make you look cooler, I guess, and whatever. Uh. And I'll also include games like, you know, Genshin Impact, you know, gacha games, where it's free to play, but you can spend your money for characters, essentially, rolling characters, 
that will enhance your experience. But ultimately, is it's not like necessary to do that to play the game. So I'm I'm gonna blanket those together, even though they are theoretically very different in concept. Like <laughs> playing the games, they are very wildly different in in in, in play style. <laughs> Uh, do you guys have any other, like, are there any ones that I'm missing that are, like, obvious, or do you think I've pretty much got all the payment models currently? I'd say you got the, like, the big gist of. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you got the large sweep of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Like, that, like you can't think of any games it. that are, that, that are, like, different from, that, that, that fall outside of the, those categories. I mean, I'm sure there are some, but I'd say for the vast, vast majority of games, that pretty much covers everything. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's move on to our first discussion. Uh, so let's talk about what is your... So in a perfect world where, you know, we're not marred by, like, endless capitalistic greed, what is your preferred payment model? for every, you know, like, like just, I, I guess it would be for every game, but I guess technically it wouldn't make sense in something there. So let's just say like for most games, what, what, what would you, what would you think is your preferred payment model that makes the most sense? Uh, I mean, if, if one of you has like your idea or like right now, you can just start off with it. If not, then I can go. I feel like I'm a simple man. All right, brain. Let's if hear it. If I'm buying the game, yes, and it's designed to be a you play the like the game has a very clear stopping point, like uh, it's not like a continuous type thing. Then I want to pay for it once and be done with it. Okay. If uh, if it's you know like MMO and all that, yeah. and it's like ongoing forever, then yeah, subscriptions fine. I, I get it for that front, but. Uh, I either want to like buy a game or buy a subscription, and I don't okay. want like I, I don't want like I'm I guess I'm more okay with it being like I buy expansions and stuff, but like I yeah. don't want to pay for like DLC, okay, for, like a base game. Oh, okay. You know, I I was just about to bring up because that that's like very similar to what I was gonna say, but 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 then now then you said DLC is bad. Now it's not the same. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> fair enough. Okay. So you're saying you you would prefer games if the, especially if they're not okay if they're not live service. I guess they should always just be you buy it and that's it. Which, a one time cost. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then and then, if if it's a, if it's a live service, then you're you're cool with it just being subscription. Yeah. Okay. What, what what do you think, Bush? Um, I would agree with most of what Brain says. Depending mm -hmm. on the circumstance, like he said, like if it's a an ongoing thing, I don't mind paying for a DLC and subscription for it. Like Final Fantasy, for example, like everything, like there's an expansion and then you're still paying for your subscription. That's fine by me if it's an ongoing thing. Okay. Because like you buy the DLC for this game, it lasts like a few years of right. content, and then you're also paying for the fee. Like that's fine by me. Okay, so you're so you're cool with games doing the the DLC plus subscription? Is that what you're saying? Yes and no. Like the DLC part kind of just sucks because the subscription is so right like expensive over time but yeah it's not the worst of okay okay well, well I, okay well in in of terms it. of the question i was asking like what do you prefer so like that would, so like pref that's if, what I prefer so what you would prefer is like you, you wouldn't pay the dlc like you'd prefer it if it was like rs where like you just where pay the you subscription pay for, and then you just yeah. get you should you should just receive the expansion because you've been paying subscription for like two years straight like it should just yeah. be like in the package okay yeah i i can see that i can definitely see that and what about you mr fish okay. uh so for for one-time games it for sure i think it for sure should be uh it should be 
a one-time purchase and that's it. Now, there was this recent controversy with uh, this game. I don't know if you guys heard of, heard of it with Dragon Dogmas Two. There was a controversy where it's a. For, I haven't played it, so I, I I could be like slightly inaccurate in some details. Uh, so you know, if if, you, if I'm wrong, you guys can correct me, or you guys in the comments can correct me. That's totally fine. But what, from what I heard was the game was a was just a was just a base game. It's not live service. That, um, so you just buy it once. You play the game. But but they also added microtransactions into the game to like there was some microtransactions to like speed up your movement or something, or you can just like teleport with the microtransactions to make it more convenient, something like that. Mm. Um, so I'll. I would say a lot of people got upset by this because they just thought like, why did this need to be in here? Um, like, wh like you know, you, you could have just sold the game and that was it, and then it would have been great, and people would have just praised the game. But you also added microtransactions to randomly just get a little bit more money from people that wanted to play it faster or something, which uh, you know is. You know, it, it's 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 an opinion, and I think everyone has the right to their opinion. Like, I'm not saying they're wrong to feel that way. Um, I'm also of the like when I heard that they were doing that, it didn't really offend me <laughs> anyway. Like, if I love playing the game, I would just you know not pay the microtransactions. But if someone wanted to pay for it, I'd be like, okay, sure, you pay for it. To me, it's kind of like, you know, you know how you guys say in Final Fantasy, you can pay like $80 to skip the the like story or something like that, right? $25 oh, yeah, to $20. skip to level 80 currently. Right. So so you basically save what? Like freaking like uh, hundreds of hours of time, right? Doing that? Yes. If you are full skipping the story, you'll save around... Right. At least three days of playtime, right. I would say. So to me, like, so, so to me, when when I heard Dragon Dog Dragon's Dogma Two was doing that, it kind of like gave a similar vibe to that, but not 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 exactly because obviously, skipping a g making a game faster like in Dragon's Dogma doesn't make any sense because like the the, the game you're playing is that that's the whole game. So like <laughs> when you skip to the end, it's like what's the point? Um, yeah. But like Final Fantasy, right? That that. And like wow, when you when you buy levels, it's like it's a little bit different because you're 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 playing the, it not the, from the, the end game is the focus. Yeah, the end game is at the focus. that point exactly. So it is a little bit different, but at the, at the same time, it's like I'm not offended that that's in that's an option. It's like I just don't interact with it. Um. Anyways, a huge long tangent to me saying that I would prefer just buying the game and having nothing else to it. It does look like companies are trying to do this little tactic of like st somehow still putting micro microtransactions into one-time games. I'm not offended by it, but that's not what I would engage with. Um, for subscriptions, I honestly, I might be different from you two, because. I, because I, like, I, obviously I'm comfortable paying the subscription, but I don't like paying the subscription. I would rather pay for DLC expansions when it comes out and then just not pay a subscription at all. Like, I would prefer that. So, and obviously... So like the old Call of Duty, like... Exactly. The old Call of Duty... Method. And, like, a lot of older games, like, you bought Call of Duty yeah. and it had a game. And you could play the game for, like, a million hours. It doesn't matter. And then, then they would sell a DLC that you can access, like, f more stuff that they worked on for, like, another, what, like, $10 or something? Yeah, like more that. maps. Yeah, yeah, more maps. You could get, like, more, more like... More maps, different guns. Uh, for different just stuff. Stuff like that. When it comes out and it's ready to go, then I pay for that and I get more content. I don't have to pay a subscription <laughs> to, like hope that they're going to give me more content because right now i'm literally paying a subscription even though like i bought the the freaking 12 year but it's it doesn't matter it's still it's still a subscription like i bought i have a subscription to runescape and i'm just hoping that they give me more content but like they're not like i paid i paid subscription to rs for the last like five months and i essentially got like freaking under 10 hours of like new content for the subscription so it's like I would rather 
wait for them. I would rather not pay them anything, so they don't they don't just they don't just become relaxed with the subscription model, like the like the the comp the developers, the managers, or whatever whoever's managing the finances. They don't just they don't just sit there all happy that we're that they're still getting paid for doing nothing. No, you get paid when you freaking deliver something because we buy DLC. That's how you get paid. I, that's what in in my ideal world. That's mm -hmm. what I think would be the way to go, for me personally. Okay. Uh, Ren says. Free is my favorite pay payment model, and you you bring up a good point, Ren. Uh, you know I'm not sure if we're gonna actually touch on this later, so I will I will discuss what uh very quickly what you're talking about. The free to play pay payment model is very very um diverse. <laughs> I'll say that because a lot of games when they go free to play payment model, it's you know it's very it's very friendly you know like League where. The, the paying money into it doesn't doesn't really affect your character or your progression, your skill, any anything at all. Um, and there's other games where yeah, you know, like freaking a lot of Korean MMOs, like you know, Maple Story, where you pay money into the game and you're just like ten times more powerful. You know, like Diablo Immortal. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you pay like freaking thousand dollars and you're just like a thousand you're like a thousand times better than every single person in the game so the the free-to-play payment models are very hit or miss but i would like to think that in an ideal world the free-to-play model is it, it can be done very well and very successfully through the cosmetics but also i have a hidden i have a hidden uh idea for the free to play hidden the model that i'll bring up later cuz I, I it's more it's more attached with another question i'm going to ask later so i'll hold off on that but i but i agree ren i do like the free to play model but i think it's incorporated very scummy scummily uh, it's, it's it's incorporated <laughs> in a very scummy way for the vast majority of free to play games like it's not it's not done well it's done very like anti consumer Okay. All right. Uh, if anyone has anything else, if no one has anything else to add, I'll move on. I think I think we got it down packed. Heck yeah. Okay. So that's so we sort of discussed the payment models from our side, like in that last question. So mm -hmm. let's let's talk about the payment models from the other side. Let's talk about it from like the company side. And I know you guys kind of already were, were on this when you were talking about oh like it's fine to like do what they were doing. So let's but let, let's just let's just dive into what actually should be the best the best payment model for like both consumers and the business like combined. Mm -hmm. I mean my my problem is is like I would say in reality like they're kind of, it's kind of a thing like of like opposite forces at play there because like oh for sure the consumer always wants to pay as least amount of money yeah. the least amount of money the cons yeah. and the freaking company yes. wants to extract the most money no you're, you're totally right but uh I, I would say like for me it's just more of like mm -hmm. when, when i can like when like you as the company can showcase that like hey this is like what we're putting out is good quality oh yeah yep then i find the price a lot more like i have way like more it makes a leeway lot more sense. with yeah oh, with like totally. how it can be yep yeah. for example like like breath of the wild and uh tears of the kingdom for me personally like i love breath of the wild yep. but i i 100 would not justify the 10 dollar price increase for Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, okay. For honestly what felt like kind of near the same game. Okay. <laughs> if not a little worse. So, so it just felt like you were playing like almost the same game and then you paid like yeah. the same, you paid even more for the second version. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. For like a story game, it, it didn't really feel... Okay. I, I did not feel any investment into it whatsoever, so it was just really easy for me to put it down and be like, I can honestly not recommend this to people. <laughs> right. 
Okay, but but that but those are still the same payment model. Like, that's still just like a one time. Like Nintendo still mostly just does the one time purchase thing. But okay, now I have no interest in playing Legend of Zelda anymore after that. <laughs> okay, no, that's that. No, I I totally uh, I totally get that. It's so very, unless I uh -huh. now rather than Nintendo having to advertise to me, I need other people to advertise. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, I I totally get that. Like for me, that that's kind of like what it's been like for Pokemon. Like, where I mm -hmm. when I was younger, I'd always like be like, I have to get the next Pokemon game. But yeah. now it's like now, ever since Sword and Shield, where it kind of felt like it was just gonna be amazing, and then it was it ended up kind of falling short. Like I don't think Sword and Shield was a bad game, but it just kind of fell short f short for me for a lot of aspects. And mm -hmm. now it's more like I just wait for people to say like, okay, is this new Pokemon game really good? And if people say it's really good, then I, then I consider buying it. That's fair. Okay. Um, okay, I understand that. I, I still don't think that's that wasn't really like what what I was what like question was, but that that's that's fine. If you, uh... I mean, the, the problem was is there's not really like a middle oh, okay. ground. In my opinion, like, okay. So, so, so you. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's fair. So, if if you think that there is no, there there that the answer is there is no um, best payment model. Like, because like, like, there's always going to be the the, uh, you know, the the tension. Like, the, you can't come to an agreement. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, like that, and then you've got like live like live service versus one time game. Like, yeah. Ain't no way I'm paying a subscription for a one time game. Like. Oh yeah. Not, yeah, yeah. That is not gonna happen. Yeah, and I I don't think there has ever been a like that like that has never ever like like ever like no company has ever been able to pull it off like I don't think right which which is good because that just sounds that just sounds awful that you have to pay a subscription to play a a game mm -hmm. essentially just <clears throat> like the closest thing I could think of to that like 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 a game that like doesn't have any updates. Is a lot of like really really old MMOs that are on like maintenance mode. I don't know if you've heard a game. I think it's called like Tibia, where <laughs> I think it's a game that like basically gets no updates, but it's an MMO, so that you have to pay a subscription for it. It's I think it's only like two or three dollars a month, but it's just still mm -hmm. it's it's just like it's so weird that yeah. uh, that's how it is. Um. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else to add, Bush, or are you just in agreement? It's it's a little bit difficult of a question, like. No, no, that's fair. It's... Especially because at our end, like, we're not in the business, so we can't even really. Like, yeah. We can't provide any insights. I, th okay, my opinion on the matter. Uh. It is. I guess I am kind of going back to like my previous question, like the points I made in the previous <laughs> questions, where I would prefer, I would prefer a a business model that provides more accountability for the game companies, developers, or whatever publishers, who, all of them. I mm -hmm. I would prefer a model that provides a lot more accountability towards them, which would it would ideally be the one-time purchase slash dlc um models but i understand why they don't do that because it's way less money than having a subscription like if you if you guys ever looked at the uh jagex like subscription earnings and stuff like that it's freaking wild like i i honestly thought it wasn't going to be that high but it's still like Jagus is raking in like freaking hundreds of millions of dollars on like from subscriptions, so I understand why they do it, and I understand like if you're able to get away with it, you know, just freaking keep it running. Like you, you <laughs> like I, it's like it's like with a lot of like YouTubers and stuff. I remember uh, back in the day, where it's like their YouTube channel wasn't really that big, but then if mm -hmm. you look at their patreon that they had which is like you know basically like your subscription model to them they would have like freaking like ten thousand members or something like that or not or maybe not that many but like oh they'd have like thousands of members paying five dollars a month and then and then you realize like wait a minute holy frick this, these guys are making like freaking 
freaking six figures um just through their just through their subscriptions so i understand why it's like that okay you know honestly the more i think about it the more i i think you guys are right it's literally impossible to, to like have an ideal it, it's, it's yeah, just not possible like... because <laughs> it's it, <laughs> Because you can have, like, the most <clears throat> player-friendly company, like, old Blizzard and stuff like that. And you can say what they did was right. You know, and we, we, we love to look at companies like old Blizzard that spent, like, all of their passion on their games, right? And we would like to say, like, oh, those guys were the greatest company ever. But then if you look at, if you ask, like, the Blizzard shareholders in two, 2008, like, what do you like better, Blizzard 2008 or Blizzard 2024? They would say Blizzard 2024 because, you know, modern Blizzard, not, maybe not 2024, but maybe like 2022 or something, you know? They would they would probably think, that, oh, modern Blizzard is so much better because freaking Bobby Kotick made the company skyrocket in freaking price because he just turned it, he just turned it into a freaking money machine. So it is all about perspective. So it's like there isn't, there actually isn't an actually a right answer to this. <laughs> Am I going to cut this question out of the podcast? No. We're keeping it in, even though it's kind of a wash. Okay, <laughs> moving on. What? Okay. What do you guys think will be the... What, what do you think the future of gaming will be for how you pay play games you know is it all going to be free is it all going to be paid somehow is everything going to be a subscription uh and, let, and but i i i won't let you guys just like raw figure this out i'll, I'll uh, let me let me like describe to you some some futuristic uh examples i think the the biggest example like elephant in the room is cloud gaming that's uh something that what was it was it Google tried to do back in the day? They tried mm -hmm. to make cloud gaming a thing with like the Stadia thing, where you like Nvidia like, currently does it. What 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 does Nvidia do? Like like describe because so, I don't know what it does. Like like describe to me what it is. Basically, you pay for a like I want to say it's like a subscription fee. And you connect to a computer that is like really, really good and okay, can run the yeah. game that you are yeah. trying to play. Okay. So All you right. just connect to that from your own computer. Okay. But you still get the performance of that other computer. And the only big issue is latency because you're connecting to a server. So what, what you're is gonna it called? Have so, I, so I like when I do the edit later, I can like um, research it. Like, what, what what is it called? I mean, if you don't know the answer now, you can just like message me later. Like, it, it's and I'll just I'll paste Nvidia it in video now, I think, or something. Okay, I mean, I can just look it up. now is what it's called. Okay, I'll I'll look that up. But yeah, um, yeah, that 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 is exactly what Google Stadia tried to do. It was. A, a program yeah. like a like a like a thing where you could connect to, a not you running it, but another computer running the game, so you would just have to connect to it, and like that's why it was cloud based. So you wouldn't even need the hardware to run the game. Something else is running the game for you, and you just connect to it and play it, um, kind of yeah. like a remote desktop or something like that, I guess, um, and you just pay a subscription I, I would assume I, I i mean i don't know I, I say that now but like you know 100 years down the line right when everything is on the cloud maybe it's not a subscription maybe they somehow have microtransactions in the cloud i don't freaking know um mm -hmm. but that's like the idea now you know um i think the and i i i think with the with the going trend and i'll probably put like a pie chart on the screen uh I think the going trend of gaming nowadays is like the largest market is the mobile gaming space. And it, and it's like not even close, right? Like everything else like pales in comparison to how much money the mobile market generates. So like what does that mean for the future? How is that going to like are 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 we just going to hit a point where there is just no audience for 
like a subscription game. Everything is just like these like free to play gacha games on your phone. What's the future looking like? And do do we need to adapt to the times, or do we need to start revolting at, as a as a society who mostly plays PC games? Do we need to start revolting and claim back the you know our PC master race, whatever? What what, what what's the future looking like? That's a little bit difficult to really come up with. But okay. so I was like, can you say that again? Like oh, no no no. I I'm just I'm just wondering like what you guys think is gonna happen in the future. Like, I mean if if you think I mean if you guys either don't know or you think it's just gonna stay the same, like eh, that's that's a that's a totally valid opinion. I mean at this point it's just it's just so uncertain with fucking everything. Yeah. Okay, like fair. you see triple A titles going up in price by like ten dollars currently. Like Old yes. Call of Duty games used to cost you sixty dollars, and then you got your season pass for like thirty dollars. Yeah. But I guess now it's technically cheaper, but more okay. expensive up front. Yeah, but I, I, I'm just gonna say, like, technically, if if we're go if we do the math and we compare like inflation from two thousand and like five yeah. versus now, I'm pretty sure it's technically cheaper now. Yeah. And I, I, and I know, like, yes, inflation for us, the consumers, it doesn't, like, it doesn't help us, but, you know, it, it, inflation has never helped us. So it's like, we, we shouldn't really look at it from that angle. Because the consumers, you know, in, in inflation, they, we always lose. So, I, like, basically, I'm just saying, I think, I think it's a natural progression that games are going to get more expensive. Just because it, it is, it is going to, games are going to become more and more complicated due to just like the the systems that they're running on and like graphics and stuff like that. It's going to become harder to, to develop them. And then plus inflation, it's just like double like going to make them yeah. more expensive. So it does make sense why mm -hmm. they're going up in price. Is what I'm saying. I I think that the way we play our games now will it will probably stay that way. Like, all the subscription models, all the freaking, you know, one-time purchases. I, I don't actually think any of them are going to die. Unless... Unless for some reason, like, like nobody buys them anymore. Mm -hmm. Um. So, like, you know... If... If a lot of people love playing, you know, subscription-based games like RuneScape, like Final Fantasy, like WoW, that they're gonna live on. And enough people keep playing these freaking phone games, they're also gonna live on because they're just gonna keep making money. So the market will just still be there. But I I do think that if there becomes a technological advancement later on, that just I don't know, makes cloud gaming just ridiculously cheap. I think it only makes sense that everyone utilizes it. If if Final Fantasy like 24 comes out, okay? And it's on it's on the cloud and they've optimized it so hard that Okay, maybe it's a bad example because it's by the same company. But let's say not Final Fantasy, but let's just call it like, uh, you know, uh, Super Fantasy, okay? Super Fantasy comes out, it's on the cloud, and they're asking for a subscription model of $1 a month. And they have like a frick ton of content on there. A, a, a lot of people would check that out, right? And especially if it, uh, we're we're doing this a hypothetical that's actually a good game. Mm -hmm. And I think if when it reaches that point, and you know, the the I know it's crazy to think that like a one dollar a month is is able to, to sustain it, but you know, but but like let's just say that this is it, it's it's a you know it's a it's a industry backed game, so. No, it has a lot of development, whatever. You would try it out, and I think 
most people would just like try it out, especially if it, if it, if they gave like okay, well, you know, you you can play like half the game for free. Like, why would you not check it out if you're? I think it's only yeah. natural that the industry would shift towards that once that start becoming more available. Is what I'm saying. Yes. Uh, let's end this on a not so nebulous question because I've been asking all these stuff that's just like that's just very nebulous. So. Microtransactions. How do we feel about them? Who, who, who wants to give your burning opinions about microtransactions first? I mean, for me, it's... Yeah. Like, the way I look at it is as long as it doesn't really affect gameplay, I personally don't really care. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me follow up because I know... I know... You know, especially if more old school players watch my videos, they will bring up that, you know, RuneScape 3, microtransactions will give you, you know, bonus experience or experience, which to them is their gameplay, I guess. So that that means they're, they're like completely awful in RS3, right? Yes. On that front, yeah, it's pretty fucking terrible. <laughs> okay. No, that, that's that's completely fair. Okay. Bush, you have any other things you want? Or Brain, you have anything else to so, add to that? Microtransactions in games is just like... It depends what kind they are. Like, right. obviously, you have no, that's, that, RuneScape, that makes which is, like, pay to progress. Yep. Um, you also have... The biggest thing that I hate in games is battle passes. Okay. Because Why is that? not only are you paying the like ten dollars to get it, mm -hmm. but you have to play the game for X amount of time, and depending on what game it is, it can take you anywhere from like a hundred hours to five hundred hours of gameplay to finish that battle pass to be able to get the next one for free. Okay. Like, that model really sucks. Because okay. if you don't keep up by playing the game constantly... You, you feel like you've been left out You in the just dust. <laughs> wasted your money. Oh, yeah, that too. Or, like, you just... You... It just feels awful. Yeah. That you can't do anything about that. Unless you pay more money and at that point why would you just why wouldn't you just wait until the next battle pass and pay ten dollars instead so it's just a lose lose unless the game is absolutely like fun as like all hell like you're spending a thousand hours a month playing it you know that, that, that makes sense yeah so my my opinion on battle passes is that I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. I I think that there... I, I have played games where I felt like the battle pass itself was... It was, gener it was either, like, very generous in terms of your rewards plus, like, how much time you would invest into it. And also... Or... The battle pass is set up in a way where it's very easy to finish. So it's just it's it's kind of like doing your dailies yeah. in RS. It's like really fast. So it's not like it's not like a humongous time investment. So so to me personally, I felt like it was an addition to the game. Like it it didn't feel like I was losing something. But I do understand that it does feel bad missing battle pass stuff. Because you're just like hyper busy, but also like when I think about it, it's like, let's say they didn't put a battle pass and they put this stuff in the game through just like I don't know a limited time event like in RuneScape. You know, you know, like back in the day when you a lot of like seasonal yeah. events, like you miss like the bunny ears and you're like, oh, that freaking sucks. I missed the bunny ears. Like that could have been a battle pass or it just could have been a limited time event. And like, I think. There's a very narrow margin of players that missed it because 
they didn't have enough time to play it. I th if the battle pass was generous. Or they play multiple games that have battle passes, and it's like, okay, which one do I want to finish the most? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I get that, but that's, yeah. but that's more on like, like, but what I'm saying is like, if the battle pass is very generous and you still didn't fit, hit, you still didn't complete the battle pass, I don't think that's really on the game. I think that's that's just on you not interested in playing the game. Like not like yeah. like not even just like a little bit, you know? Because like if you missed it because mm -hmm. of that, that that's that's kind of on you. Um, so I, because to me a battle pass, if a very generous battle pass would almost be like it, it's kind of like RS seasonal events, seasonal events. It's just like a little thing that you do that's for the season, and you know you feel rewarded for doing it. And if you missed it, it's like well. You didn't play during this time, so it is what it is. So uh, get fucked, I guess. That's why I like old school whenever it comes to seasonal uh, events. They do another one the next year, and you get everything from previous year. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. And the year and, before and, and yeah, that, and the year I, before that. And, and yeah, like, if battle passes, I'm sure they can incorporate something like that, too. Like, you don't have to make it FOMO. Like, you, you could... You could add, like, some sort of thing where you can redeem previous rewards, like, totally. They add... They add some of the skins yeah. in, like, Fortnite, I think. They added a few of the skins from way old Battle Passes, yep. which annoyed a lot of players because, okay, well, little Timmy could pay $20 nowadays to get it. I had to pay $10 and play the game to get it. Yeah. Like, a frick ton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just think that Battle Passes could be incorporated in a way that's not really that scummy but because because it's like because it reaches a point where every game gives you rewards for playing the game but like if you just don't play the game like are you just supposed to just log in for like one minute claim reward and just leave like it's it's just like you're just not even playing the game yeah. at that point it's like like what like what are we doing <laughs> like but battle passes yeah. just make you feel like you're forced to play it in a way yeah, no, no, I I know where you're coming from because yeah. because the vast majority of battle passes now are these really really predatory like you have to reach level like 150 in the past to get this really cool mythic skin and then you have to there's like there's like three layers of the battle pass yes I'm 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 talking to you Blizzard with Overwatch too and it's oh, like Fortnite <laughs> does the same oh. <laughs> yeah so you have to either play like 300 hours to get it. Or you have, to, and then also pay like ten dollars, or you have to pay the ten dollars plus another like seventy dollars skipping levels. It's it's like, yep, yeah. You have to basically spend an entire game's value exactly, and to and skip. that's and that's the those are the battle passes that I think that are really bad. I'm just I'm just saying that like I think it would be nice if there if if most battle passes were a lot less time focused, like maybe maybe like. 10 hours to, to 10 to 20 hours depending how long it is like if, if the period is like six months and yeah it can be like 20 30 hours but if it's only like a few months or then it could be a lot less time if it was a lot less time still had a lot of rewards to it so it, it it just feels rewarding to play the game and and for people that really really just missed completely out on all of it then you could pay like ten dollars and just get them for like no time at all sure like like just throw that in there mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't think that's offensive, because it's like, if you were just gonna play the game anyways, and you didn't get it, like, like, what are you complaining about? You didn't, you didn't even play twenty hours in like six months. Like, you're just not even playing the game. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like the current battle pass on Fortnite is very short compared to other ones, and it's just like, even me, I've put quite a few hours into this one so far, and I'm not even done. Yeah, then that's just a bad battle pass. Yeah. Like I think it ends on the twenty fourth or something. Yeah, I, I I'm wondering if if I should give my opinion on this because I I've been getting freaking roasted in my YouTube comments, and I don't know if I want to get roasted more. You know, well, I'll... roasted means comments, which is good for the algorithm. True, <laughs> true. Yeah, I I was gonna say that. You know, like I know everyone hated the hero pass in RS, and I, and I, I still think that the first hero pass they did was freaking god awful. 
but I think it could be implemented in a way where it's actually not bad. I think most oh, people... Oh, it 100% can. I think most people are, are just, like, they're a little too... They were a little too. Um, they just jumped. They just jumped on the hate wagon too quickly. Because I think there was stuff on there that wasn't actually like a bad idea. Uh, like with a lot of the cosmetics, it's just that there was there was a lot of it that was bad. That 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 overshadowed a lot of the good things with it. So, I and I know Jagex at this point like there's no way they're gonna try a hero pass too like it, it's gonna it's gonna flop just because of the uh, concept of it like it, do, it doesn't matter how good it is it's gonna flop no matter what I I've just played a lot of games that I thought that the battle pass was pretty good um and, and I and I liked I liked how they implemented the battle pass that's just my opinion uh and yeah and and, and the it the amount of times you find a good battle pass versus bad is like one in like 87 like there's so many bad battle passes so i i completely see where everyone's coming from well what was, what was my original question oh yeah well <laughs> mtx and games okay yeah and i agree with you guys about rs3 if if you th if you if you believe that skilling is the game, then yes, the treasure hunter is a complete destruction of the game. <laughs> like the game is not a game anymore. <laughs> it is just pay to win hell. If if you think skilling is the game, I have I have not thought skilling was the game since like 2014 when I maxed. So that has never been my personal opinion about RS3, which is why. For RS3, I don't mind the microtransactions that they've been doing because to me it's all cosmetic because I don't see skilling as the game. I see skilling as the progression to the game. Uh, and again, that's I, I don't I don't think everyone should agree agree to that. If you think skilling is the game, then that is completely valid. Like I, I that you know that's your own opinion and I respect that. For me skilling has always been a means to reach the end game or the actual game which is you know pvm pvp whatever you enjoy is your like whatever you enjoy about playing rs you know getting these big money drops like what i'm doing this big zuriel robe bottoms from chaos elemental look at that mm -hmm. look at wait let me say it. look at that 14 mil big money okay we, we are kind of running late so um i'm gonna give my like final opinion on my creatures actions and then if you guys want to add anything like feel free um I, I actually think microtransactions like the battle pass. I know. I'm I, I'm so I, I, I sound like such a freaking milk toast Andy today. But I think battle passes sorry, freaking bell. I think microtransactions are not inherently bad. I think they are just bad because the industry has incorporated them in such a predatory manner. But I think microtransactions are essentially just the paid version of like you know back in the day when you watched a really cool anime like Dragon Ball okay you Dragon Ball Z it was really cool and then you you'd ask your parents to like buy you a, a you know a, a Goku figure or something like that, mm -hmm. that microtransactions is just the modern version of that it's like you're buying merchandise from your yeah. from the company that you want to support. Like I think that this game is so cool. I want something to, to that like a further further like reminds me how cool it is and then b like support the company. That's what so if a microtransaction was purely that, it was just this little cosmetic in a game that had no impact on the game itself. It was just this cosmetic thing and it just reminds you like oh that this game's awesome. And that's what it is, mm -hmm. kind of like how League was doing it. I, I I haven't I haven't looked at League in like the past like ten years, by the way. So if League has entirely changed their business model, I have no idea. So don't <laughs> don't roast me in the comments if I'm completely wrong about this. But League in the beginning, it that's what it was. It was like I played this game; it was completely for free, and if I had fun with it, I can I can show support to Riot and buy their skins and look cool and just remind remind myself how much I enjoy this game. 
it's it's just like a it's just like buying merchandise IRL. It's just like this little tiny thing to help support the developers more. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think microtransactions are bad. I just think they're incorporated really horribly. But especially you can even buy characters on there. Yeah. So you don't exactly. have to like grind it out. Yeah, exactly. It's and it's technically not it's not impacting yeah, it's... like your 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 like opponent's gameplay at all. It, at exactly. So it's completely fine. I think in the future, there actually could be another payment model that we have not discussed yet in this entire video, okay? So, you guys know, uh, you know, streaming services like Netflix and whatever, Hulu and, you know, all the freaking things where you watch your shows, your movies, your anime, all that stuff, right? You're familiar with all this? Mm -hmm. Yes. You you guys know, you guys know, uh, you, you know, you know, uh, what's it called? Freaking, you know, Hulu has this, this like base version where you have to pay a subscription, but you have to watch ads <laughs> like in the video, which sounds really yeah. awful, right? That sounds terrible. Yeah. And, and, and to me, uh, okay. Man, I've been getting in so much in so much hot water recently, so I probably shouldn't say this. But to <laughs> but to me, yeah, it, it feels like if you have to if you have to pay Hulu the base fee and then watch ads, it feels like you lost. Like <laughs> you're paying them <laughs> and you're still watching ads. It's like I I accept defeat Hulu. Like I can't afford your expensive plan, and I'm still watching your ads. But I'm still also paying you. It just feels bad. And it, and and if you're in that situation, don't feel bad. Like I'm not I'm not trying to trash you because I too cannot afford Hulu. So, okay, so I'm I'm on your I'm on your side. Ain't no way I'm paying eighteen dollars a month to watch Hulu with no ads. Like frick that. <laughs> I just don't even pay Hulu because I don't support that practice. Um, so I think in the future. You know, we could have, we could, we could have, you know, RuneScape with a subscription, with a subscription of twelve fifty a month or whatever your favorite game MMO is, or we could have RuneScape with three dollars a month plus ads. Oh my god! Well, we already get ads. Well, on one, like, what do you mean? <laughs> no, 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 no. Ads for their own I'm treasure kidding. hunter is not ads. I'm talking like <laughs> you open RuneScape, and then there's like a freaking one minute video of like you buying Doritos. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and and frick, I don't know. Maybe if it's so successful, th there could end up being free to play games that just. That just have ads out the wazoo when you play the game, and it doesn't, and it doesn't even technically have to be disruptive. It could just be somehow in the background of the game you're playing. You know, like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be in your face and like just ruining the game for you. Because I'm sure if, if if that's what the case, like no one would play the game. Um, but I don't know. Maybe in maybe in like a hundred years, if we have this like neural link, the ad could just be played into your mind. While you play the game, it's not even disruptive. No, it probably is disruptive, but you know. That is still disruptive. It <laughs> is disruptive, but also you know, there oh, might be Oh, I'm in the middle of way. this hard boss fight. Let me just have this, a this, freaking this guy ad... talking to you about <laughs> Raid ad... Shadow Legends. Yeah, it just freaking <laughs> starts playing in the background. You're like, frick, man. God, could you imagine? It'd be so bad. Look, I'm just saying, it's the future. We're we're, ha we're gonna have ad ad supported games. Oh god. Advertisement supported video games. It's it's coming. It's a it's the unfortunate future. I'm calling it. You guys have anything else you want to talk about with microtransactions or just money hungry game game companies? Um, I guess since I didn't really elaborate on it too yep. much, but just like like for me, like if you want to pay for cosmetics, cool. Yep. I don't really care. Yep. Um for stuff like story skips, for example, mm -hmm. um, for story based games with like in game style content, you want to skip it? Cool. Whatever. Don't care. It's your prerogative. Um, but if you're like skipping 
a game where the story it, is the central point and there's no the end game, game to yeah. it. It's just it, like that's Why just are you dumb. getting the game? Yeah. To begin with. And then like obviously like you know like I don't think you should be getting like advanced stuff. Like 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 the speed thing you had mentioned earlier at yeah, the like beginning. Dogma, yeah. yeah, like or like how when uh what was it like Skyward Sword for Switch? Okay. They had an amiibo that like you could teleport to the above and below anywhere. And it's like, <laughs> I never knew why that. is this That's not so just funny. a base yeah. feature of the game? So it, 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 it's, it's just like a feels bad. It just shouldn't even exist. Yeah. OK, that's fair. Is this even the right place to say it? Maybe I don't actually. I think I've said it in like previous videos of mine where I don't mind microtransactions, even ones that are kind of to a degree predatory. Like, obviously, I don't want, like, super predatory microtransactions. I'm not, like, that much of a dirt eater. But, like, mm -hmm. I I wouldn't mind all of Jagex's stupid predatory microtransactions where you have to pay, like, freaking 200 keys to you have to use like 200 keys to get this outfit that's available for like three days like that's super predatory uh mm -hmm. but i wouldn't mind them as much if there was a frick ton of content in the game that's fair i think my record transactions suck but the content is the key to your games content needs to come first before exactly. they go predatory content is king as long as you make a great game you will be successful that that is my message to you, Jagex. All right, I think that's a, a very great discussion. It is time for the poll. Let us see who had. I, I Do mean, we even I don't have feel like... bad takes. There weren't really like many takes to begin with yeah. here. It feels okay. like. All right, who sucks the most toes? This is an obvious answer. Oh no! <laughs> it's literally, literally it's so the lover of the fish. Like, how could it not be? The lover oh of the feet. no! It's it's the feet enthusiast. Obviously, you 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 literally force that upon <laughs> yourself, Andy. Wait, I got a third vote. Frick! Let's go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I, I have to host again next time. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for watching. Let us know in the comments what you guys think about microtransactions, how you feel about them, and games in general. Thanks, Bush and Brain, for joining me in this discussion. Of course. Yep. And until next time, catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.